Do you think Public Enemy changed rap music? They changed it? Yes, they did, because they made it political. It was the only really political rap group ever. Other rap used to rhyme about, you know, selling drugs and stuff that happened in the hood. Fight the power! Fight the power! Fight the power! They went, they went back to like Martin Luther King. Have you forgotten that once we were brought here, we were robbed of our name? And there was a need for Public Enemy to come along and say, you know, you could do more things with rap music. Revolution, you know, in the easiest instance means change. If you set out to make a difference, then you must know that there must be some holes in the terrain. And that's one thing we noticed. And that's what allowed us to just do it in the first place. You always want to be the big chief. Flavor was the, the person that actually, if it's a steak, he's the A1 sauce. That's right. And if you smell anything in here, stink, it's me, because I'm the shit. Griff is always the thinker, the organizer, the, the maximizer of plans. Uh, give me that for a second. Hold up for a second. You know something we got to say in Public Enemy? We say the legends ain't ready to leave because the kids ain't ready to leave. Terminator X, the ultimate role player. Yeah, this is Roosevelt. Roosevelt, Long Island. Everybody used to think of something in the water because we come from here, Julius Urban, Dr. J came from here. Eddie Murphy came from here. As a matter of fact, we'll drive by Eddie Murphy's house. Um, that one right there, a the big one, grew up there. You know, you ain't grow up as a child of poverty. <laughs> it's a big house. <laughs> well, this is Roosevelt Youth Center. During the uh, late 60s and 70s, this was actually the spawning place for music and entertainment and a lot of place for the Roosevelt Youth to go to. And guys like Hank Shockley, Professor Griff, got their start here. You know, matter of fact, there was times where Keith Shockley would be spinning records or Professor Griff spinning records and Eddie Murphy would be on the microphone. And that was the beginning of Spectrum, which uh, Hank Shockley started. Spectrum uh, was a mobile DJs that I got my start with in 79. Spectrum started around 75. And this spot was like booming from the periods of 1971 to about 1985, 86. What you looking for, the same thing. That's a new thing, check out this. That's, that's why I'm telling you the elements of public enemies started here. You know, public enemy records came out in uh, 1987, so. I mean, the youth center kind of closed down in 85 and was boarded up for a long period of time. Let's go inside. Roosevelt Youth Center. Now this is going way back. This is this is the core. Back in the days, a DJ used to be, you know, set up on stage and um, do their thing, and people used to actually stand and watch the DJ, and they'd be like this, you know, and people would get their dance on and get their thing on right around here, and and the DJ would be actually up there and. That's the, the, the music bug bit me with the point where the person was, would be on the mic talking about on and on to the break of dawn. And, you know, saying the same things on the mic that uh, Muhammad Ali used to do boxing, so. Lottie, Dottie, when the fans coming through the party, cracker in the back, don't your nose Illuminati. Ain't nothing changed, P.E. would be the same crew. Resurrection in the name, here to save you. That encouraged me to write my own rhymes along with the guys that were releasing tapes from the city like Eddie Chiba, DJ Hollywood, Grandmaster Flash, Melly Mel. And of course, people used to sit out here to try to get up in the gig. They couldn't get past the doors and they would have to sit out here, so. <laughs> Hate's a strong word, but I hate snow. <laughs> we're rolling through Hempstead right now just to bottom part of Hempstead and then we're gonna go to South Franklin 
street. It's tripped out thing because all these a lot of these buildings here for lease, but they're too damn expensive. So when we were going around trying to look for a place to, for operations, every place was too expensive. All right. You see the zero is off there now. <laughs> One night, and the snow was, it was about, the snow was out like this, and we was promoting the gig. So me and Hank was actually, you know, promoting the gig and stapling the poles because we was the king of staples, you know. As we're here, you know, we're stapling and we needed another, another place to operate because before we was operating out of Hank's mother's basement. Um, we looked around and we saw like, you know, for rent. And we said, you know, man, this is a nice building. And we made an arrangement and we moved up in here and the, the top floor in the back and uh, that's where we set up on uh, the famous 510 South Franklin Street Studios. This is, this is uh, as historic for us as the Stax movie theater was for its record label. Oh. Let's go to the Delphi, right? So the Thursday night throwdown pretty much was the black students' night to party. I definitely was going every Thursday. So we're entering the Delphi campus. I started going here in September 1978. And back here is like, uh, this is the university center, you see. And this is uh, third floor is where the radio station's at. A lot of good times in this building. They call it a cyber cafe there now, but downstairs is where the Thursday night, where the rat skeleton used to be for the early Thursday night throwdown. The second floor, the ballroom. Back like in, um, in 80, 81, 82, 1980, this was the spot where a lot of Thursday Night Throwdowns took place. So the Thursday Night Throwdowns were in here and the place would be packed. And the inspection was many, at many times the DJs that actually turned it out. The third floor is where the radio station used to be. And we had spent nights and nights from two to like six in the morning. Hello, how you doing? This is where the radio station used to be at years ago, so. I guess it's no, nothing like a radio station anymore. But, uh, thank you. So it was right here. This was the hub of the beginnings of many a hip hop on Long Island, Queens, you know, parts of Brooklyn. And um, from 81 to at least 1991, well, really 1993. With three three key guys, you know, Bill Stephanie, um, Dr. Dre, that's Andre Brown, who later on went to Yo MTV Raps fame, and then Wildman Steve, who coincidentally is a partner of mine in internet radio, that's WBAU. And uh, we spent years here building and crafting the science of rap music and hip hop, which is the beginnings of Public Enemy right here. Without that, you know, the beginning of Public Enemy would have not, would have not existed. I can tell you where maybe when we got started, you know, where Public Enemy actually threw a lot of, well, where we threw a lot of our gigs in 86, which bled into the, the Public Enemy era, it was right here, the Korean Ballroom. And the Korean ballroom held some of our biggest gigs. Like that, like that. And the beginning of Public Enemy, we did some of our first performances here in Long Island, which were like, you know, we were known to throw gigs, but people were really surprised that I was a part of a group. I would take a paycheck and go and put the down payment across for the Korean ballroom. 
and then hang flyers all throughout these strips. Um, promote it on radio, because I mean, we really couldn't promote it, so what we had to do is give away tickets and, and change it in exchange of promotion. I used to work right across the street at that company called EPD. I was a messenger transferring um, film, um, you know, messengering film throughout the Long Island and Queens area. Coolest job I ever had. A lot of my ideas come in the car. I always thought I was going to die driving while riding. <laughs> That's right. Come on, come on. Since I kind of put the mic down of straight rhyming for about two years from 1980 and 1981. You better get your mic, kid. You better get the mic. You better get your mic, kid. I got some motherfucking mic. You better get your mic, kid. But I began to start making tapes on WBAU because there wasn't enough rap records out. So we supplemented our radio shows with homemade tapes that we made on our own. Make no mistake, we don't shake or stutter. So he the word of the brother who makes the boy into a man. It's the job of another man. Well, one of the guys uh, in one of the neighboring rap groups said uh, to Flavor at the time, he wanted to take me out. You know, he wanted to battle me. I was on my way up here to the studio, you know what I'm saying? This brother stopped me, asked me, yo, what's up with this brother Chuck D? He swear he nice. I said, yo, he swear he know he nice, you know what I'm saying? So yo, kick the bass right now to the brothers to let them know what goes on. I made a tape called Public Enemy Number One. And we put it on the radio. And it was a big hit for about a year and a half. It was a mainstay of the record, uh, of the radio station. You and so uh, when it came down to naming the group that was wanted by Rick Rubin and a new record company called Def Jam, um, it was a matter of just saying, what's the name of the group? And Hank just said, you know, name the group Public Enemy since we had that song called Public Enemy Number One. And it just clicked from there. But then um, later on, we added things to what Public Enemy meant. For y'all seeing us for the first time ever, we go by the name of Public Enemy. That's right. And the meaning of that name what? means the Constitution that says it starts off with we the people, what's considered us, black people, three-fifths of a human being. Well, shit, a pig is a goddamn full pig. Being that the public follows this document to this very day, then we must be the enemy until shit really gets straightened out. I tried to find somebody to actually be, you know, public enemy. But um, I couldn't find anybody that really, you know, was better than I was. Here I go! 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 At that time I started, I was already 20. 6, 27 years old, and I thought that was, you know, too much of an age to actually start doing records, but uh, I had to take that position because uh, I was being recruited, so why not do the job? Hey! Oh! Hey! That's the back of the first album right there. Back of the first album cover. And we shot it, and it was freezing cold, and I think snow was on the ground. You know, Glenn Friedman shot the, you know, the cover. And that's it today. They got some fence around. What's up, y'all? All right. You know, that's it. That's going back. Flavor was one of the guys that actually grew up down there on the other side of town. Yeah, boy! Yeah. He used to put up this whack graffiti. He was introduced to us by um, T.A. the DJs, who later became Son of Berserk. And uh, he had bought flavor up to 510 South Franklin to the studio. Yeah, boy. Well, he was MC DJ Flavor. He was always Flavor. 
And uh, Hank thought it was important to just like say, all right, you need a more hip hop tint to it. So just put the flavor at the end of it, like Melly Mel, Flavor Flav. One, two, uh, everybody get the fuck up and let's get real. Y'all ready to get busy or what? Griff was always Professor Griff because he always used to carry books around and, and be very, you know, detailed about, you know, what he was into. And, you know, he was into martial arts. Yeah. Terminator X was actually, his name was Melody. When we became Public Enemy, and I just thought it would be a cool name to be Terminator X because of the movie Terminator. And I was just like, why not? It's better than DJ Mellow D. I already had a Chuck D, so it didn't make, you know, you're gonna have a corny name and then just have one corny name and have everything else with flair. Chuck D is uh, real simple. His name is Chuck D. Chuck is my nickname given to me by my mother. Chuck D. First name is Carlton. Chuck D. D is my middle initial for Douglas. My name is Chuck D. Chuck D is really simple. It's self-explanatory. Once again, back is the heart rhymer. Rock, rock, rhymer. Yo, now what? DJ Chuck, DJ Lord is back on some old food tracks. I built Public Enemy to be, I guess, a feel of ship that breaks the iceberg every time. Might be an ugly ship. Has a lot of cuts and bruises and, and dents in the hull. But the boats still float. We demanded that, you know, our voices be heard. And if our voices are heard, let our minds be heard with our voices. You really got to do it with some kind of um, substance behind your words. So you want to inspire people. You want to encourage people that they can do it. You can live life on the positive and add something to the world. You can live it on the negative, take something away from the world, or you could just be transparent. I choose not to be the latter too. So without further ado, I'll bring you public enemy! Peace! If we were brought here, we were robbed of our name. Yeah! Robbed of our language. Yeah! We love our religion, our culture, our God. That's right! And many of us, by the way we act, we even lost our minds. Come on, y'all! Come on! Throw your hands in the air! Come on, y'all! Wave them like you just don't care! Come on! If you wanna rock shots, you turn them about! Come on! Everybody say, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody! Come on! Everybody! 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 Hey! Say yeah! Yeah! Say hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yo, you ain't Hurricane G! Well, and she ain't me, nigga. Put it up on the board. Another rapper shot down for the mouth there, Lord. One, two, three. Down for the cash to reach all of my lyrics. Oh, yes, no doubt. Hey, call rock rap for the night of green. Why are you? Should I do? I never lose to a team. But I can go solo like a Tyson Bolo. Make the fly girls wanna have my photo. Burned in the room, hanging on the wall in remembrance that I rocked them. Oh, Yeah, one, 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 one